This is Pirna, a very attractive town on the Elbe River of some 37,000 people in Saxony, and I think fair to say, the gateway to Saxon Switzerland. I arrived in late June. What stood out to me as I was crossing the Elbe River was the location of the free Stellplatz for motorhomes, and with such a fantastic view, how could I not stay there? I was sad to have got there so late in the day. I had driven from Bamberg, but taking so long about a journey I could have done in a couple of hours that I regretted my decision not to put my foot down a little bit, particularly as I had an early appointment the next day which gave me very little time to wander around Pirna. Not just wander around it, cycle around it as well, as from the Stellplatz, there are cycle paths, and as I was later to discover, they would have taken me into very interesting places. Note to self, I shall have to go back to Pirna at Stellplatz, stay there and explore the area by bike. This was not my first visit to Pirna. I have friends there who I see quite often in Nuremberg and Dusseldorf, and they're from Pirna. In 2009, I went to their house, and being a historian of World War II, I interviewed my friend's mother, who was a survivor of the bombing of Dresden. I then went and had a walk around the town, and in particular discussed how the Nazis had murdered the handicapped in the Sonnenstein mental facility. Both of these videos are on YouTube, in fact they're both quite long videos, the uh, Sonnenstein 1 and the Walker on Pianist 2, but the, uh, the interview with the uh, uh, survivor of the bombing of Dresden is uh, a, a number of uh, videos. Now the quality then is not as good as what I have now, and there, there was different times when you had, a, you had a limit to how much you could actually post on YouTube, 10 minutes, and there was a certain amount of megabytes, it's not the same today and unfortunately the equipment I had then was wobbly, but the information is just as good. Furthermore, I'd wanted to visit the region of Saxon Switzerland, which is something that's called the Saxon Sandstone Mountains, or the Sandstone Mountains on the Elbe, or something like that, and uh, for, the, for some time. Um, I'd seen a program on British television about painters of the Romantic period, and that really attracted me, even though I'm not interested in painting at all. But now I had the opportunity to walk in the steps of these painters. Now, the area has been inhabited for at least 14,000 years according to archaeological finds. Indeed, the word Pirna derives from the Sorbian na pernem, meaning on the hard stone. And it could also be related to the Slavic god Perun, which I think is the equivalent of the Norse god Thor, although you know, I don't speak Sorbian, but I can, and I don't know that much about religion, but uh, uh, I know a little bit, uh, and I know a little bit about the Sorbian language, so that's why I think. Of course, it could be completely wrong, and somebody can correct me if that's the case. Now, uh, the cult of Perun was present in the area. The representation of a pear tree in the coat of arms, I think, was a suggestion to the Perun cult, although it has been somewhat changed because the word in German um, uh, for pear is Birne, which in a way sounds like Pirne. Well, it sounds quite a lot like being a really, if you think about it. So, um, there are two things which coincidentally came together. The Germans came to the area in around the 8th century. Henry the Fowler founded the nearby castle of Meissen in 929 CE. The castle in Pirna was mentioned for the first time in 1269 and probably dates the 11th century. In 1233, Pirna was mentioned for the first time in a document and in 1293, King Václav II of Bohemia bought the town and castle from the Bishop of Meissen. Thus, Pirna belonged to Bohemia until 1405. In 1544, the castle was upgraded to a fortress by Morris Elector of Saxony. Three years later, it was stood at a siege by Elector John Frederick, Elector of Saxony, in the Schal Schalmaldic War. From the 23rd of April 1639, the town was besieged by Swedish troops, a siege that lasted five months and devastated the town. This is the Thirty Years' War, and uh, I often mention it when I'm talking about uh, German 
history and uh, German towns, what we can see today and what was destroyed uh, by the war and what was created for the war. After the war, the Sonnenstein Fortress was built with modern military insights and the commanding stonework still exists today. Further conflict occurred in the 18th century. It was captured on the 29th of August 1756 by the Prussians and two years later there was another siege, this time from the Austrians. On the 14th of September 1813 it was taken by Napoleon who temporarily lived at the Marine House at the Market Square until the French surrendered Dresden on the 11th of November 1813. Transport links in the 19th century were provided by steamship travel, a tradition that continues to this day and you can take a boat down the Elbe River should you uh, so desire. The railway came later and nowadays we can use the magnificent Dresden S-Bahn to travel along the Elbe River through the National Park to the Czech border. And uh, these trains are quite, quite amazing really because they're stopping at villages where there's, uh, the, the capacity of the train is like five or six times greater than everybody who lives in that village. Anyway, see that now. I need to say a few words about the Nazi period and the mental health facility at Sonnenstein Castle overlooking Pena which was used to kill around 15,000 people through the use of poison gas and some of the murderers uh, from uh, this uh, uh, policy were later used in the death camps in Poland. Now, uh, as you may be aware, I'm a Holocaust historian, it's my speciality and uh, we see the, these characters from places like Sonnenstein and uh, the other so-called euthanasia um, uh, murder camps uh, turning up in Poland and there they're murdering uh, Jewish people largely. Now as one walks around Pierna today there are many signs which remind one of what happened here during the Nazi period. Whereas the Elbe is in part the reason for Pierna and it's what gives its charm to a large extent, it's also a danger in disguise and has flooded several times, in part due to the railway as the embankment stops water escaping. The town was badly flooded in 2002 and is something which is likely to happen again. There's a distinctive style to the streets in Pien. The streets are aligned from east to west and from north to south forming like a chessboard-like system. Only the streets east of the church are not in the shape because of the nearby Castle Hill, the Bergberg. Museums and exhibitions worthy of note can be found in the Sonnenstein exhibition which relates to the Nazi period, City Museum, the Botanical Collection, the Richard Wagner Museum and the DDR Museum which has a collection of DDR memorabilia. Now, other than the two films I mentioned, uh, uh, series, two series I did uh, in 2009, I've also done a lot of filming in Saxon, Switzerland, and uh, you can have a look at that, and um, I think it's a fantastic holiday area, and I've got to say some of the best walking, uh, hill walking, uh, I've ever done anywhere. Anyway, we'll be having a look at that later in other films. For the moment, here's Pierna to enjoy.